Hello everybody, my name is Captain Dave Rowe, and welcome to Stinkpot. I'm the first mate, Stacy Guth, and you can tell I'm very at ease at making videos like this. But we do create a lot of content on our Facebook page if you want to follow along on our boating adventures. And the page is called Our Adventures on Stinkpot. That's right, and uh, we also have a YouTube channel. We do time lapses of... Uh, of our travels and uh, we have most of the loop actually at this point uh, available as a, as time-lapse videos uh, set to my music I'm also a professional folk musician anyhow we are What's coming the to the name you. of that channel uh, the na name of that channel I think it's just stink pot uh, no it's folk it's on the water oh. So if you look for Folk on the Water on YouTube, you can find all of Dave's great time-lapse looping I videos. I stand corrected because I don't carry that kind of information around in my mind. <laughs> but we've been asked a little bit about how we have managed this trip financially. Uh, a lot of people who do this journey are retired. They have their money in the bank and they already know how they're going to finance it. We decided not to wait until we could afford it. So we wanted to give you a little information uh, about how to loop and how to afford traveling on a boat. Frankly, I am uh, a poor person, uh, <laughs> so this was this was a tricky proposition to me because I, I am a folk musician. I already admitted I'm a poor person, uh, and as such, we had to figure out how. Uh, with the two of us, we would be able to do this in such a way that did not bankrupt either of us. Uh, so we, first of all, uh, bought a lot of paint uh, and turned our dirt house into a rental, uh, or at least a temporary rental for a year. Uh, wrote a lease with a tenant, and the proceeds of that rental, uh, by and large, uh, cover most of our expenses for what we've done on the Great Loop. We had to get some storage. We decided to take 90% of our belongings out of the house and store them. There's still a few things in the cellar, and uh, we just said that part is not included. <laughs> it was That's as simple right. as that. We also relied on the kindness of friends to store our vehicles for us. We both have cars, and Dave was, has a really good friend who put his on a battery charger while we're away. and Inside, in a garage. Yeah, he, and I have the good fortune of um, having my car stored with a couple who are willing to drive it around every month, and I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good friends, and they've been taking care of the car and keeping an eye on it and... and it's uh, because it's a, a, a hybrid, it doesn't like to sit for very long. Batteries start dying and whatnot. So it's good to take it out and, and dust it off about once a month. And they're, they're doing that for us. Um, what else? We, uh, we, we had to outfit this boat. We bought this boat for the loop uh, and whatever adventures we do afterward. Uh, and we had to outfit it. Uh, and how did we do that? Well, we had another boat. <laughs> it, it helped to have that capital where when we decided she has gas engines, she doesn't have a generator, she doesn't have a bed you can walk around. It just wasn't feasible to use her for the loop, though we did consider it. Um, but to be able to decide to sell her and, and have that chunk of cash on hand I would say was a must-have for us in order oh, yeah. to uh, outfit this boat a trickle of money coming in on a monthly basis for rent isn't enough to get you going and the other thing about having that other boat was we also had the years of experience that came with owning that boat so we knew what we needed to do what we needed on this boat to be comfortable for a year aboard uh, without going home again uh, and that that's something that I, I think is probably irreplaceable is that kind of knowledge also we knew how to run a, a boat of this size already uh, we had some good experience that's that's taken us around the loop with really nary a problem uh, barely a hiccup uh, and we didn't slam it into lock walls we didn't do uh, 
any dangerous maneuvers. We knew how to drive. We knew how to handle lines. We knew all the ins and outs. Uh, and those are things that, uh, if you don't know them, can cost you a lot of money really, really fast. So uh, we, we were lucky to have a boat before this and have experience before this. Uh, I, I don't think I would want to be one of the folks that wakes up one morning, discovers there's a great loop, uh, buys all the books, buys a boat, and goes uh, without any experience under my belt. It, I, it just feels like a recipe for disaster, frustration, and and quite honestly, bankruptcy. Yeah, much more expensive. Dave is able to do all the maintenance that we need. He does system checks every morning, and Stinkpot Knock Antique has been running like a top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we bought this boat, uh, well, one of the things... As we were shopping for this boat, we realized we wanted diesel engines right up front because that uh, they use so much less fuel, uh, and the fuel cost would be so much lower, which was absolutely true. Um, and we worked with a broker, and his best piece of advice that he gave us, he said, the way the boat looks, uh, for what we're doing, uh, the way the boat looks is less important than those two big diesel engines under the decks because replacing diesel, diesel engines, uh, well, frankly, if we had to replace the two diesel engines that are on this boat, it would cost more than the boat is ever going to be worth to resell it. So we wanted to make sure that they were sound above and beyond anything else. Uh, so when we found a boat that had very sound diesel engines, uh, and it also happened to be in a reasonably good state of repair, wasn't hard on the eyes, uh, et cetera, et cetera, check the boxes. Uh, we put in an offer, uh, a full price offer, I believe. well, close to full price offer. We, we, yeah, 5% less, I think. We did knock a little bit off, uh, and we own it, uh, and it worked out very well for us. Yeah, she's a 38-foot bayliner. Um, a lot of boat for the money. A lot of both. Yeah, the, this the is a Bay very popular yachts. production model. So there are a lot of them out there, and we highly recommend it. I mean, it has a bathtub, a shower. Separate. Don't fill the bathtub. <laughs> you, there's not enough hot water aboard, or even fresh water aboard, to be filling bathtubs. But it's cool. And it has a very comfortable stateroom with a walk-around bed and its own head. So if we had company, they would have their own stateroom and head, and it has a. a a helm below when you're living aboard you're going to want to be boating in some pretty less than ideal weather and so the lower helm is coming to use for bad weather uh even bug attack cold weather it's <laughs> we probably if, if we sat down and figured out how much time we've spent at each helm it's probably about 50 50 uh, and and that's not to say you couldn't get a single helm boat as long as you had a good solid enclosure around it uh, that will keep up the, the chilies and the buggies and, and those sorts of things. But it's it's nice having uh, a second helm inside. Um, and there's a heater in here. It's, it, it's, it's been a very comfortable boat that way. Um, we did uh, finance part of this craft. Uh, it, it was a, a little bit more than we had jingling around in our pocket when we went to buy it. Uh, so we financed the last... $20,000 or so, uh, and the payments on that uh, are spit. Uh, the interest rate's very low. Boat loans are very economical as borrowing goes. I don't generally don't like to borrow money. Uh, I'd rather pay cash for a car, uh, a decent used car, uh, but in this case, we just didn't have it. Uh, we still owned another boat, uh, and we, we had to do some finagling, so... Uh, it's like a mortgage almost. It's a really long term, so it ends up being a couple hundred bucks a month or yeah, something like that. It wasn't that even that. Uh, and and it, it really, uh, it, it's, it's allowed us to have a lot more walking around cash uh, going forward because when the other boat sold, that suddenly became accessories and, and upgrades to this boat. We did not put it back onto the loan. We used it. Uh, so the loan is still out there, and it, it just automatically comes out of our savings once a month. Uh, we don't even think about it. And um, when this is all said and done, and we both return to the real world and our real lives, 
uh, we probably will pay it off fairly quickly, but it did en enable us to do this trip right away, which was kind of important with the lock closures coming up next year and whatnot. So, so finding a boat, you know, she's 33 years old, but she did have excellent engines. As Dave mentioned, we had a broker and he said, you're buying two engines in a hull. <laughs> and if those are sound, I hope that helps you. I mean, I'm sure you all have tons of questions about how to find the the perfect loop boat, but... Oh, we have a perfect boat, and, and it's not this one. Uh, it's Yeah, don't let perfect get in the way of good enough when it comes to this. It's more important to get out there and do this. If we had a quarter of a million dollars to throw at a boat, we would have, uh, <laughs> and and happily so. Um, but instead, we spent, what, a fifth of that, uh, and we got a boat that really did the loop very, very well. It's shallow draft, 38-inch draft, so we could go places with this that we couldn't have gone with our dream boat. Uh, and it really sips fuel because it's a smaller boat than our dream boat. Uh, so it, it, and it's comfortable. Uh, we, we're going to keep this boat for a while. Uh, at, at some point, I fully expect we'll probably upgrade to our dream boat, but uh, it's not going to be for some time. Um, making money, though, that's, that's, that's a tricky thing. Uh, and we're not retirees. Well, you're sort of a retiree. Yeah, sort of. Um, but I'm not. Uh, I'm <laughs> a professional folk musician. I'm homeless. Uh, and so... Original intent was that I would book some shows around the loop uh, to help defray costs of of the trip, and I did two or three of those, and we quickly realized that uh, stacking them up next to each other was difficult because you can't vote with the schedule, at least not safely. So it's been two or three, like every six months I'll do a show, uh, and that's been comfortable enough. Um, not wonderful because we're voting with a schedule for part of it but uh don't do that don't vote with a schedule i guess that's what i'm getting at um but when when i let go of the idea that i really had to be actively working on this thing uh actively working for a living i should say uh that's when we started looking into alternative ways of making money one thing I can highly suggest, and we could probably help you with if you wanted to ask questions in the comments, is getting a very reliable internet signal. Yep, uh, that, that's that been of, of paramount importance to us, uh, and it has been since the days of our last boat, where we really just wanted a good internet signal on the water. Some people could hypothetically even do their jobs now that so many are working from home to to work from boat as long as the internet was reliable. What we have is a, it's an AT&T based hotspot uh, and if they call it a home phone. It's also connected to a regular plain old telephone. It's not a cell phone. Uh, you just plug in uh, a regular handset and, and you have a, a boat phone, which is which is kind of exciting really when you think about it. Um, but uh, the the downside to that now is that they really, since we bought this unit and the contract, I'm, we're, we're grandfathered in with the contract that we have. Unlimited. Unlimited data, unlimited voice, unlimited, unlimited, and unli unlimited. And they don't, aren't writing those types of deals right now. But if you can get one or if you already have one, keep that. And in terms of a device, even these devices aren't really being marketed anymore. Um, but we kind of have our pulse on what devices people are using on boats. Um, a lot of people are just hotspotting to cell phones uh, and using cell phones and, and tablets, and that works just fine. It's not the best, and a lot of marinas have uh, Wi-Fi networks that you can connect to. They're you, usually not the best. Uh, <laughs> a little unreliable. We, if your bed, bread and butter is relying on the internet, don't count on a marina. No, they're not very good, generally speaking. Um, but uh, hotspotting it does work. Uh, you might consider getting hotspots with two or three different carriers uh, so that you aren't, number one, caught short in an area that's not covered by one company or another. Uh, and number two, uh, when you, if you can't get an unlimited, unlimited data plan like we have uh, and you find yourself out of data, you can just move over to another hotspot from a different carrier and yeah. off you go. Um, but 
it, that, you know. That it made me think because we are using the internet to create boating videos and content and Dave doing concerts live and, and we have found that there are people who are so appreciative of, of following along our journey um, that we've created a, a page for patrons called, well, the website it's on is Patreon. Patreon forward slash Stinkpod. And we release content on there and people with generous hearts and who are behind us for doing this before we were retired, before we had money and take pity on us and want us to eat all the beignet in New Orleans or... I believe the quote was, I want you to eat beignet until you puke. Yes, one uh, of our favorite patrons. So, <laughs> so we, we've been lucky that way as well. Uh, it It's by no means a, a main source of income, but it is something that uh, does keep the wolves away. We've never uh, not spent it. <laughs> we've, we've always spent it. Every it's, month. It's uh, come in very handy. <laughs> it, it's been the odd marina when there was a storm coming in, uh, or you name it. Everyone, we, we definitely needed the money. It, it's definitely come in very handy. So we thank those people profusely for helping us do this. Uh, but yes, we're creating content which uh, makes them get something out of the deal. We also have uh, a Teespring account, so people oh. can buy T-shirts and coffee mugs and those sorts of... Stink pot onesies, because that's appropriate. Right. Tchotchkes uh, that uh, we get some of the, the proceeds from, and, and that has helped us out as well. Uh, it's nickels and dimes compared to everything else, but our main source of income is rental income from our, our dirt house in, in Maine. Um, but uh, all of that together is how we've done this. There's really not much else to tell. Yeah, we've been frugal. Uh, we like to anchor out a lot. We love having a sunset as our neighbor and eating on the boat. We're introverts and anchorages <laughs> are free. So, so that's one way to save a ton of cash. Marina's do add up. They are pricey, uh, especially if you have an even larger boat than Stink Pot. Yeah, our, our average uh, marina stay is somewhere around $65 to $70. Uh, and if, if we get bigger, we get more expensive. So that's another reason to keep the, the, the boat cost, the boat size, uh, under control. Uh, it really does help in the in the uh, at the end of the day. So, but good anchoring technique is key, and that speaks to Dave's point. If you can possibly get some boating experience before you get your loop boat, you know, pra practice anchoring, practice how you're going to generate power. Uh, we save money on gas. Dave installed 700 watts of solar power on Stink Pot. Yeah, uh, and that really helps. I, uh, I mean, that was an expense. We we used funds from the old boat to finance that uh, and it, it really does help us it doesn't really save us money except that it makes living on the hook a lot more palatable and easier we don't have to listen to a generator running you know etc etc so it's it's nice to have solar power if you could or some people do wind uh, you, you definitely want alternative energy aboard the boat it keeps things going and, and keeps refrigerators running and, and keeps food from spoiling and costing you money <laughs> so um, but yeah it's uh, th this trip really has happened uh, completely uh, by accident very quickly we expected to take another couple of years uh, well, first of all, we didn't expect to find this boat when we found it. We were looking because we thought, ah, oh, we'll, we'll just see what's out there. See what we like. See what we like. And when we found this boat, we said, well, we'd be dumb not to buy this boat now. So we bought the boat. And then uh, the lock closures came on the horizon uh, in Chicago. And we said, oh, well, now we have to go now, too. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we're going to be waiting two years. Uh, so we didn't really get to put our financial ducks in a row the way we might have liked. Uh, and we just went for it, and it's it's been great. It's been fine. Uh, it, it's not the sort of thing you wait for. Uh, it's the I, adventure of a lifetime. I mean, you'll be forever changed for the better, and you don't want to put that off nope. until you think you're ready, until you think you have enough money, until you think you found the perfect boat. 
I mean, as it is, as it is now, I'm under 50 and I've already sprained my ankle once. Uh, (laughs) You know, you, you have to do this. Uh, You have to just go for it because if you wait, you're getting older. Ladders are a little more difficult. It is physical. It's a physical job. You know, you have to lasso pilings and, and every once in a while you, you might find that your anchor is hung up and you have to get physical with it. Uh, or you might have to swim and check your props and go underwater. And Yep. I mean, so. there are many things people hire other people to do and if, with an unlimited budget you can do those things but we're much more uh hands-on, hands-on and budget oriented uh and and that's i think what this is all about is how to do this uh you don't need to get a, a big boat like we have we've seen some people out there and you know 23 foot sea dories doing this uh they don't they're not sleeping in a full-size bed like we are um but they, you have to decide where where you can draw the line on comfort, uh, and this boat was that for us. Uh, we encourage you to do it in the most efficient way you can. Uh, be comfortable, be happy, and enjoy the ride, because this is a ride, baby. Have fun. <laughs> if you have any more questions for us, look for us on Facebook, Our Adventures on Stinkpot, or you can find Dave at DaveRowMusic.com. That's right. And we'll see you out there. Thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy.